Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock so we can determine whether it's a buy or a sell. At the end of the video, we're going to look at the financial ratios of the company. Leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer. The company we're going to look at is Newmont Corporation. And Newmont is the world's largest gold mining company. It was incorporated in 1921. It owns gold mines in Nevada, Colorado, Ontario, Quebec, Mexico, the DR, Australia, Ghana, Argentina, and Peru. In addition to gold, Newmont mines copper, silver, zinc, and lead. It's the only gold company in the S&P 500. Let's get started with the model. This company has a big market cap, 52 spot $7 billion. That's the value of the company according to the stock market. Let's see what they're trading at, 65.57, so that's one share of stock. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that back to today's value. That's exactly what we're doing in this video. Now I'm gonna pull their actual free cash flows. Free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And now I'm gonna pull the net income, which is the profit and loss on the income statement. And I'm gonna take four years of that and put it into the model. And also the revenue, which are the sales for each year, also on the income statement. Let's take a quick look at the numbers. Look how much the sales have grown, six billion, seven billion to nine billion. And look at their margins. It went up to 29%. So that means 29% of the $9 billion revenue was converted to net income. That's really impressive. And they have pretty healthy free cash flow every year. You need to look at the free cash flow. So even though they had negative net income two years, they might have had high depreciation or other non-cash items that brought down their net income. As long as they're operating positive cash flow each year, they're growing their company and adding value to their investors. Let's look at the capital structure. We need to see how much interest they pay in their debt, $301 million. Let's go to the balance sheet, see how much debt they have. They only have long-term debt of 6.1 billion, that's debt due after 12 months. And they pay 4.9% interest on the debt. Interest payments on debt is tax deductible, so let's get their effective tax rate. Income before tax of 3.7 billion. Income tax of 830 million. So the effective tax rate is 23%. The cost of debt is the interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate, which is 3.8% cost of debt. To get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a low beta. When you invest in gold, you tend to be hedging yourself against the market. They tend to have low betas, which makes it less volatile and less risky. So it's unlikely to swing a lot if the market moves. It's pretty stable. Let's go back to the balance sheet, get the current assets. We need the current assets to calculate the current ratio later. And current assets is what you use to run your day-to-day -day operations. And that's 6.3 billion. And let's see what that is. 2.5 billion of cash, 373 million of net receivables. That's how much money other companies owe them. 1 billion of inventory and 1.4 billion of other. We also need the current liabilities to calculate the current ratio. That's 2.4 billion. Let's see what that is. 539 million of accounts payable. That's how much they owe other companies within the next 12 months. 162 million of taxes payable. That's how much taxes they owe the government this year. Accrued liabilities of 328 million. Crude liabilities are expenses a company incurs, but it hasn't paid it yet. And other of 576 million. Stockholders' equity is the value of the company according to the balance sheet, that's 21 billion. Let's see what that is. Common stock of 1.3 billion. Retained earnings of 2.3 billion. This is the income a company has earned historically minus the dividend payments. And they have negative 265 million of accumulated of the comprehensive income. Let's go back to the income statement, get their operating income, that's 1.5 billion, that's how much they make on their operational business in 2019. Let's look at the capital structure, 22% debt, cost of debt is 3.8%, 78% equity, 
cost of equity is 5.5% and the WAC is 5.1%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 63 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital, that's in green. And we get a value of the company of $58 billion. We divide that by 804 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of $73. They're trading at $66, so they're trading at 11% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at $61, so they're saying the stock is a sell. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. So it looks like it's pretty much at its peak now, but gold is a great commodity to own, especially people feel that the dollar may be weakening, so this is a great thing to go into. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have an okay PE, a bad price of sales, and a good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 18.8. So investors are paying $19 for $1 of net income. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 5.4. So investors are paying $5.40 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 2.5. That's a good ratio. So investors are paying $2.50 for $1 book value. They have a good current ratio, a weak ROE, and a good interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see 20% or higher. They are 13%. So they're not providing the best value to their equity holders. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They're at 5.1, so they can cover their interest payments five times. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I did videos on Barrick Gold, Kirkland, and here's Newmont. And if Newmont has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So they're better than the average in price to earnings, price to sales, price to book, and current ratio. They are worse in ROE. They do have the most debt, although 22% isn't too high. And they are the biggest company of the three. They're a little bigger than Barrick. So it looks like a great company with pretty good ratios. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment, I'll be sure to answer. Thanks for watching.